welcome everyone. Welcome to uh, Wink's neighborhood. Uh, we really appreciate that you, you're taking the time uh, from your busy uh, work schedule and now also busy at home schedule. This is not uh, easy <laughs> time, so we totally, totally appreciate this. This is not on top of your mind, but one thing I do know that um, at Wings for, for Growth and Wings Neighborhood, what we really want to do is bring everyone together and educate, share with each other and be there for, um, to help each other. So with that, my name is Varsha Vaishampayan. I'm a CEO and founder for Wings for Growth. Uh, I'm not going to go through all my professional background. Please go check it out on LinkedIn if you're interested and if I can be of any help based on my background to anyone. Uh, I would be very happy to do so. I know that we are uh, going through uh, uh, unprecedented times. Uh, everybody is seeing what we never thought we will. Um, but one thing that gets me going, um, guys, is really keep an eye on future. Um, I am very inspired by what um, Governor of New York says, that don't let your problems get ahead of you because ketchup is very difficult and it definitely stops the growth. So that's the motivation and inspiration we have here at Wings for Growth. It is my uh, personal mission and two, I, two different things. One is educate myself, bring avenues to educate and train and share information with others, which is Wings for, Wings for Growth and Wings Neighborhood. And personally, me and my husband, we also are trying to sew masks for people with our community uh, where we can drop off these masks and give it to the hospitals and first responders. So I think we should, uh, we should not just worry and stress out what's going to happen and do nothing. We should focus on upskilling, educating, and do what we can do to help others. So with that, we're gonna kick this off. I have two amazing, amazing speakers, Lynn Sawyer and Giles Nugent. I've worked with both of them. Uh, they're senior executives from financial services. And I personally am very happy that they're here because I know that they can add a whole lot on the topic that we have today, which is remote working etiquette. So Lynn, over to you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Varsha. And thank you for organizing this. Um, I, I know technology is challenging for all of us. And I think we're using technology in new ways uh, that uh, we're all coming to grips with. But I was really happy we were able to pull this together. Um, and I'm really happy to be a participant in the first session. So a little bit about me. And I will echo what Varsha said, is you can find a lot more about me on my LinkedIn profile. And certainly, if there's anything there that piques anybody's interest, or there's any way that I can help um, above and beyond these seminars, please feel free to reach out. Uh, but just to give you a bird's eye view of my background, um, 25 years plus in financial services. Um, I've got a lot of experience managing large teams globally across client services and operations. Um, I've been responsible for different client segments, um, running from large corporate clients in the custody space to ultra high net worth uh, wealth management individual clients. Um, Throughout my career and in my life, I've had a lot of focus on women's initiatives. Um, Varsha and I go back to my city days, and uh, I spent a lot of time at city, and uh, I was the co-head of the Women's Council there for a couple of years. And then I spent a lot of time on different committees. One of them was a developing talent committee, which is where Varsha and I really met um, and had a great time sort of focusing on how do we develop women leaders at city. I've also been part of Women's Network at Morgan Stanley, where I was uh, recently in financial services there. And I have been a mentor in WINGS for this last cohort. And then I just recently joined the board. So very excited to continue, um, you know, dabbling in women's initiatives uh, in what I think is a very impactful way. So let me hand it over to Giles. Yeah, go ahead. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, Farsha. So hello everybody, I'm Giles Nugent. I am a mentor at Wings, which is where I started, and now Varsha was kind enough to ask me to join the board, so I've been on the board for a little while. Um, my background is I spent over 25 years on Wall Street in research and technology, supporting trading desks. Um, during that time, I was a member of teams, and then I ran organizations and projects across New York, Charlotte, Chicago, Southern California, 
London and various locations in India. Um, I think that's particularly relevant for this topic in that even then we developed a range of practices that were important for projects that were being done remotely. And so even before today's challenging, we want to use, even before today's challenging time, sorry, um, this was very important and it's now even more important today. And so we want to share um, some of these best practices, some of the lessons I learned um, definitely made a difference. And we were always very conscious about doing some of these things to help people be more successful. Um, I do want to add one other point to the presentations. Our idea here, and Varsha, forgive me for just going on, but I think it's important to get, get out. Yeah, sure. um, we're all going to grow and evolve through this time. It's obviously a very challenging time. And people who are successful are people who adapt and do well, and I'm sure all of you will. And so we wanted to start with the most foundational part of working at home and then continue through progressive steps of helping people in a time like this so that people can be ready to go and be successful as the world gets back to normal. So that's our schedule through the multiple weeks of this program, um, each, one, each presentation building upon the prior and hopefully at the end of it, or as people, to whatever extent people can get involved with these, they can learn some things to help them be successful, whatever the world is like in the few months or however long it takes to, again, get us back to normal. So thank you. I will hand it back. So uh, Lynn, if you don't mind, let me just quickly uh, uh, set some, some controls of Zoom so people know exactly. Uh, before we jump into the presentation, I skipped that. So I know that uh, we were expecting a whole lot of uh, people here, about 45 plus. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we can manage this. So you all are participants are all muted and all uh, on no video. So that's by design. Uh, there is a, uh, you can raise your hand as you can see on the, in, on the bottom of your screen, there are controls. You can raise your hand, which I will immediately see. And then I know that I have to, to come to you. So we'll do that. Your Q and A is at the bottom. So you can uh, submit the question and answers as they come to your mind, you don't need to wait for the last minute. As a matter of fact, I suggest that you submit them as quickly as you want so that we can take them either during the presentation or towards the end. And then at the end of this um, webinar, you will have like quick five question survey. I totally would appreciate if you take that survey. It helps us make our webinars better because we have seven more scheduled. Uh, these webinars will be recorded and made available to people who want it and who uh, uh, registered but couldn't attend. Uh, and we will also send out presentations. So with that, um, Lynn, over to you. Perfect. So if you just go forward and we'll talk a little bit about what we're going to cover today. So um, in the session today, I really want to focus on how we can be more impactful while working remotely. Um, high level topics that we'll cover is where and when to work, a little bit around software. I'm not going to be the technical expert. I don't know, maybe Giles will keep me on the straight and narrow there, but uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of the pitfalls that you want to make sure you don't um, fall into. I want to spend some time talking about styles and business relationships and then just balancing your communications. Sorry, we got a typo there. Um, so I, I let me lead off with um, I'm not the expert, right? And I really feel Giles said it, we're, we're learning and we're evolving together. We're all sort of in, uh, you'll hear me mention this throughout the presentation, a little bit of a new normal. Um, but I have had some time to do a little bit of research. You'll see in the presentation when we send it to you afterwards, I've given you a lot of links of different articles that I've read that I found very interesting. Uh, I'm not going to go into depth on any one of the articles. I've sort of cherry picked what I think are some of the salient thoughts that, that pull together. Uh, but you certainly you'll have access to those if you want to look at them um, later. And quite honestly, there's a lot out there and every day. I keep seeing more and more sort of come into my inbox and more interesting articles in the news about, you know, how to work remotely and, and how to develop sort of your style of interaction over, you know, video, which is, you know, really what most of us are, are, are working on these days. Um, so let's go to the executive summary that gives us um, a, a little bit of a, a guideline on what we're going to cover and, and how we're going to um, delve into these these different what I think are really tenants around 
you know, how do you holistically think about um, your interaction and how do you communicate with impact the same way you used to communicate with impact, but in a completely different way when you're working remotely. And I think, you know, when I, when I look at these sort of four tenants that I'm going to spend a bit of time on each one, um, I really am thinking the overarching theme is really how do you juggle, how do you prioritize, and how do you deal with trade-offs? Right, because nothing's perfect. Um, and I think even when we were in the office, things weren't perfect, but we, we had all these coping mechanisms to learn how to work in the office. And now we're, we're faced with a few more challenges that are very different that we haven't thought through for a long time and developed, you know, sort of strategies around these challenges. So I think, you know, we have to be prepared that as we're learning and as we're evolving on this journey, that there's trade offs that we need to make. Um, and I also think the other thing that we're all sort of sitting and, and we're in isolation, right? So a lot of us are thinking these things through a little bit by ourselves. So we're all sort of sitting here saying, what's important for me to consider in advance? What matters? What doesn't matter? And, and how do I deal with those things? And how do I think about those things? Um, so, you know, the new normal is pushing us to think differently about what impacts our messaging, what impacts our brand. Um, we, we've, we need to move from, think about it, it was an innate skill. You went to the office every day and you knew how to interact when you were sitting in your office. It was, you didn't even think about it, right? It's just second nature. You understand how to operate in a meeting that's in a conference room. You know how to have a hallway conversation with your boss or a colleague. You know how to run your team meetings. And all of that was just ingrained with us. We didn't even think about it. We didn't think twice. We just went into autopilot. And now we're thinking about how do we host a video call? How do we host a video call where I have multiple video participants like this and there's three people on the screen or even more? Um, how do I work with my IMs maybe at the same time as I'm, you know, in a video conference and on the phone? And then how do I hold team meetings and how do I hold man um, meetings with my manager that are impassioned and get the, the message across and, you know, are as impactful as I was when I was in person. So those are some of the things that um, we're going to delve into. And I'd like to move on and, and really start talking about time and place if we could, Varsha. Okay, great. So, and these are kind of in no order, but they, they felt like the right order to me. So time and place, I think this is, um, a topic where we've all got some new hurdles and some new challenges, right? Because our time and our place has totally changed, right? Many of these weren't present before. You're coordinating with others in your house, in your apartment. Your schedules are maybe a little bit more free form and maybe there's demands on you at different times than, you know, wasn't in the past. So I, I think some of, the, some of the things that I've been sort of thinking about and implementing in my own house is how do you consider plan and share your daily schedule? And I always, you know, before I left the office the night before, I looked at what's on my agenda the next day that I need to be ready for and what's on my, what's on my calendar, you know, a week out. And now that has a totally different meaning because I have to figure out what other people in my household are doing. I have to communicate um, with folks that are using other video tools, um, telephonic tools, you know, just to make sure that we're not sort of overriding each other. So scheduling is just a whole different thing. And then there's the family schedule, right, of things that you you didn't have to think about when your kids were having lunch when you were at work. So, you know, that that was being handled in a different way. And now it's part of it's part of your life and it's part of your schedule. And so how how do you how do you work that in and how do you think about that in a different way? Um, I think setting the ground rules, creating a space and, and creating times is really important. Um, I'll sort of jump to the to the bullet at the end, but I think it's really important to think about how you start your day and how you end your day. Um, there's, there, there are a couple of comments in the articles that I attached here that, that talk about that. And I, I think the ground rules need to be specific to your situation, right? Um, I, I think this is the one where I attached the, the BBC video. I don't know if any of you, I think probably many of us and every, every one of us saw the, the, the poor um, guy who was doing the interview for the BBC and he was in Asia and, uh, and both of his kids 
came in while he was, he, he had a perfect setting. He had obviously set the stage. He was in a suit yeah. and jacket and tie. He had, you know, he, he really looked professional. He could have been in a, a new studio. And, uh, and then his, one of his kids ran in and then his other kid came in in a bouncing thing. And I watched it again the other day and I just had to laugh and, and God love him. He just, he carried on. His wife came whipping it and got the kids out. But you know, that sometimes happens. And I think what we have to do is we have to st stack the deck in our favor and create ground rules. And, you know, nothing's going to be perfect, but if you've got some ground rules and you think through some of the things that could go wrong, you know, everybody says, oh, well, I guess he should have locked the door on that one. Um, so you, you learn from your experiences. And all I can say is continue to evolve your ground rules based on your experiences and what works and what maybe didn't work. And then I think there's some wonderful opportunities um, where we have some found time, right? Some of us used to spend a lot of time commuting and we're not commuting anymore. So there's a bit of found time there. Um, some things are challenging, right? Like you just run and go pick up your coffee and now you actually have to make your own coffee. You're like, wait a minute, I, you know, where's the coffee cart? Um, so I, I think there's ways that we need to sort of think about how do we use some of the found things in our schedule for some of the things like making lunches and, and organizing lunchtime that maybe we didn't have before. Um, I, I think it's important, I read this in one of the articles, is, is and, I, and I've always sort of internalized this, that the best way I can help women, women succeed is to help myself succeed so that then I can be a leader for them and I can be there for them. And I think when we're working from home and we're taking care of our business responsibilities and our family responsibilities, you have to remember that you've got to take care of yourself as well. And I know it's really hard and it's the last thing that falls to the bottom of your to-do list, but you have to remember, you know, take a break, take a walk around outside, leave your workspace. And you know, it was an interesting thing that I read in one of the articles. If you're sick, not like coronavirus sick, but like if you're just sick and under the weather, take a sick day. Um, and I think when we work from home, we forget about that. We think we can just soldier through because we're at home, so we should be fine. But I think sometimes you need to take that time for yourself and you need to remember that. Um, goes hand in hand with don't be too hard on yourself, right? We're all trying to get done exactly what we got done when we were working in the office. And I think it's a new normal and, and we have to, you know, set the right goals for ourselves um, and not be too hard on ourselves. And then just learn, by, learn, you know, from the things that work well, keep doing more of that. And the things that aren't working, figure out, is there a way that I can sort of solve for this in a different way? Um, I'll, I'll pause for a second and, and Giles, see if, you, if there's anything you want to add maybe in this topic of time and place. And if anybody has questions, submit them through Q&A and we'll pick it up. Okay, sorry, Giles, go ahead. That's okay, certainly, I, I do have a, th a few thoughts. Um, obviously, all of this is very important and we're all trying to do it. Keep in mind that the person you're talking to is also trying to do all of this. And sometimes it is hard to line up your time and place with their time and place. So uh, and this is a theme I'll bring up again and again do be considerate of the other person. If it doesn't work out, that's okay. Everybody's having the challenges. If it doesn't work out for you, that's okay. I, I think that don't be too hard on yourself is a very important point here because sometimes it isn't gonna work out. And we've all had what it doesn't, and, and I have to admit, I've seen more things in videos about people's families over the last week, and it humanizes them. I actually embrace it a little bit. I have one person whose kids are always climbing over him or on the back of the couch. Um, and I have two dogs and every now and then they start barking and people start asking about my dogs. So it's okay. Um, you do your best to you try to do this, but when it doesn't work, that's okay. Don't feel bad. Everybody's going through this and, and everybody's just considerate of each other with what's going on. Okay. Yeah, and and I, I'm sure Lynn, you're going to cover this, that women specifically have very high standards for themselves. They don't well, want to get anything wrong. We try like really super hard. Sometimes we over overdo this. So good point, Giles. Thank you. Great. So let's talk a little bit about setting the scene. Um, I think for the, for, for most of us, this is a new thing, right? Um, you can see I worked kind of hard on my background here. Um, you know, just to sort of put a little flower there and say, do I really want my New Yorker pictures in, in the mix? Um, I, I'm not enamored of my green wall as part of a video, but 
when I looked at the trade-offs of things, I could be in my kitchen, which has a much more neutral background, but there's a higher probability that my husband or my mother will walk by. So I figured I'll go with the green background. So that's what I mean by like trade-offs. You have to sort of think about what is most important to me and then don't drive yourself absolutely crazy to get it perfect. Get it as most right as you can and then, you know, go with that. Um, I think the other thing is we're all really, really stretched. And I think we're stretched because it's almost like we're exercising different muscles that we've never used before. And, you know, or maybe we feel like we have two left hands or, or, or two right hands or something like that. And we're probably sitting there going, ah, is it really necessary? Like I'm busy. Do I really have to worry about setting the scene? And I would say, yes, sometimes it really is. Sometimes it's not, right? Sometimes you're having, like, you know, I've had a couple of um, conversations with my mentee at Wings, and I'll admit I was wearing a baseball cap. I swore her to silence, but here I am. I'm, I'm going to tell you that uh, I had a baseball cap on. And, and, you know, I think to Giles's point, that probably developed a nice relationship with us because we've known each other a long time. She usually sees me in a suit. We usually grab a coffee on Wall Street. And I think, you know, it's probably nice for her to see me in a, in a different setting and, and as, a, a, as a real life person that occasionally would wear a baseball cap. Um, but that said, I think you want to spend some time um, planning and thinking and maybe developing new coping me mechanisms. So I think, you know, what you want to do is you want to be ready to be able to get by and have a few go-to settings that you know work, right? If I need to take a quick call, that's just an audio call. If I need to do jump on a quick video call, where's the best place for me to do that? And is my setup ready or is it something that I need to, to set up? Um, and then you wanna think through, if you have a couple of meetings where you need to knock it out of the park, that doesn't just happen. You don't just grab your phone and start walking around and videoing yourself and knock it out of the park because some of that is a little distracting when you've got all that movement. So I think you want to pick your battles, right? You're not going to run every meeting and, and every video conference the same way, but you want to have a couple of different um, standards that you can deploy based on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, a couple of things that I have here in the, in the actual presentation is choose the right medium and device and test it, right? So like right now I'm using my iPad. I always use my iPad. Um, it's not perfect, but it's better than my phone. And um, quite honestly, I don't have a computer. I know that sounds weird, but I don't actually have a laptop. I can borrow my husband's, but that's a whole other scheduling nightmare. Um, so again, you, you, you figure out what are your challenges and what's the right way for you to do it. If you are leading something or it's a critical, you're a critical participant or it's a critical meeting to you, give it a try beforehand. You know, I had a most embarrassing moment just the other day. I was joining um, Varsha's board and there was a board meeting and I had been on like five Zoom calls and two minutes before the board meeting, I tried to get into Zoom and I couldn't get in. And so I realized that even if things worked before, it doesn't mean they work now. And, you know, it, you want to, as I said, stack the deck and put as many things in your favor as you can. So if you have the time to jump in early, if it's something that's important to you, do that. Um, I think the other thing that we need to think about is not all meetings need to be video, right? It's just like the way we used to think about when we were in the office. Not all meetings, did you go to a conference room? A lot of meetings we did with audio calls. Those all still very much work in this day and age. So, you know, I think you want to understand because some people might get a little bit of video burnout, and, you know, and in, in that case, I'm thinking of your team, but I'm also thinking of you, right? Like being on a video all day long, I think would be a little tiring. So you might want to pick your moments when you're video and when you're just audio. Um, I think it's important to set clear objectives and agendas for meetings because it's a little bit harder now that we're, our cues are a little bit different when we're over a video or, or we're in an audio. So it's nice for people to know sort of, is there a goal and objective for a meeting? Unless it's really just a chit chat and it's one of those things where you're trying to build rapport, build trust and, you know, be transparent and have more of a social call. But if it's really a meeting that you want to have an objective or, or it, you have a specific outcome in mind, then you want to think about creating an agenda 
And then you also want to think about what's your outcome. And if you're brainstorming, then maybe you're in a more casual setting. If you're having a team meeting and you want them to be comfortable, you're in a more casual setting. But if you're trying to get your boss to make a decision or you're trying to present a plan or a strategy, then I think your dress and your tone and, and the way you set out that meeting is a little bit different. Um, I think you always want to, whether you're wearing a baseball hat and, or you're having a casual brainstorming session or you're more in business attire and you're trying to create strategy or make a decision, you always want to think about how it reflects on your brand, right? And I think that just means being your natural you, whether it's in a baseball cap or a suit. Um, but I think you want to make sure that what you're doing isn't eroding your brand. And I have to say, I did. I thought long and hard before I got on the video with a baseball cap on because that's not really my brand. Anybody that knows me probably would say they've never really seen me in a baseball cap. Um, but I didn't think it was going to erode my brand with my mentee because we had such a strong relationship and and we were saying we're there, we're there for each other. So um, I thought it reinforced a piece of my brand. Um, so again, I just be prepared for your interactions. Um, lighting and sound does matter. I was in a conference call with somebody, we did a video conference call, and um, the person had light behind them, like a window behind them, and they had no forward light. And so basically they were Darth Vader. All I saw was a very dark head. And I had never met this person before. So it was a little bit disappointing to me that I couldn't I understand who I was really talking to and we had gone through the effort of setting up a video call but the lighting on their end was not um was not helpful so I think you do want to think about lighting you want to think make sure your sound is working it's it's nothing's more frustrating than when you're trying to talk to someone and you can only hear like every other word or every other sentence um so spend some time thinking about that create a couple of professional niches that actually work for you in your work in your in your home um and then you know there's there's always noise right Giles was talking about his dogs and and we we did meet before the meeting started and we did a little bit of prep and and Varsha and I were able to hear Giles's dogs very robusto and um you know when you're in situations like that you can't always control it and so make sure you mute when you're not speaking um and be very familiar with where the the mute button is and you also want to be very familiar with where the video camera on off button is because you, not everything that you plan for happens the way you plan for it. And so sometimes you have to, um, you know, very quickly juggle and do other things. So, sorry, I said a lot there on setting the scene, but uh, I thought it was an important topic to to talk about. And um, Giles, I'll, I'll pause and pass it over to you to see if uh, there's some other other points of view. Thank, thanks, Lynn. Just, just a small story. So the other morning, we had a group meeting, everybody video conference. It was 10, so it wasn't that early. Only two of us showed our faces and everybody else turned off the video. <laughs> now, going through your mind, is that good or is it bad? Well, our immediate assumption was anybody whose video is turned off, they are in really bad shape. <laughs> and so they're turning it off for a reason. So we actually made them all turn it on and most of them look good, one, one looked like a little worse for the wear. <laughs> my, my point there is we're all tempted to turn off our video in these these things because we don't want to be seen or something. It really helps the people presenting when in a small group, obviously we can't do it in, in a group this large, but in a small group, just see everybody's face, see their reaction. So I highly recommend that you do try and stay on video when you're on a video conference and contribute. And keep in mind, if you don't, people are going to assume the worst. You're going to come off much worse looking not showing your face than if you show it because we're all used to it anyway. So go ahead. No, this is, this is good. So a couple of comments. I think people are loving your background, Lynn. So that, that's, <laughs> that's great. That's good. All right, and, good. And there's a suggestion that uh, from UN that uh, Zoom actually offers virtual backgrounds. So yes. if you want to not show your own house or anything, then you can use that. Although I tried several times, my computer is not compatible. So I couldn't do that. But I think this is a good point. I think my takeaway from all of this, thank you, Lynn, is it really is not the one answer for everything. You just have to really figure out who you're talking to, what is the agenda, 
And what, what, what do you want to show as your brand? And is it comfortable? Is it a baseball cap or t-shirt? Or you really need to be in a suit. Sometimes just being in a suit all the time is not a good idea because then it would be intimidating depending on what you're doing and who you're talking to. So all good points. And we do have a question, but do you want to take question now, Lynn, or should we keep it at the end? I don't care if it's specific to this and we want to just knock it off, I'm happy. I think it is. It is about, uh, it's from Sharon, and she's saying that these days, because of the crisis, everybody's very accommodating and flexible, and uh, you know, people aren't really caring too much about if your cat or dog is showing up. Her question is, is this going to be our new norm going, uh, even after the crisis is over? Will this be the thing that everybody is okay with? And I'm sorry, Sharon, if I didn't read your question exactly like this. I, so, so I'm going to take it in two parts, and then, and Giles, I'll pause, and you can, you can add your your thoughts in as well. Um, I think we have a lot of latitude right now, right? So I did spend a lot of time on my background, and thank you guys for liking it. But um, I'm not always going to have that amount of time, and sometimes I'm just going to grab my iPad and I'm going to jump on something, and you know, there might be a, a cat or a dog in the background. The other day, actually, uh, Varsha, uh, Giles, and I were prepping for this meeting and doing some brainstorming. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but my mother walked by me with a cup of coffee in her house coat. And I was like, hmm, I don't know if that's on brand. But it was just a really small group. It was just us. We were very familiar. And I think there's a bit of latitude. So I do think that right now people are realizing that we're all sort of in this new journey together. And then I also think that um, everybody, it, it's almost like we've leveled the playing field a little bit and everybody has, has work-life balance front and center because it's right there in your working environment, right? You're working and your family are right together. So, so I think there's, there's a lot of really nice latitude. Um, will it continue and is this the new normal? I don't really know. Um, I think it's, it's probably a little too soon to tell, but I do think that, you know, coming from an ops background and been operations my whole life, and I had a lot of bosses back in the day that always said, nobody's working from home not happening. Nobody's working from home. And now everybody's working from home. So I think there's some old myths that will be dispelled. And I think that there'll probably be, um, you know, maybe we're going to move the bar on empathy a little bit in terms of balancing family. And maybe that'll continue. Giles, you try. I, I agree with all that, Lynn. We, we can move on. I would just say the same. Absolutely. And I think Lynn and Giles, you guys know that, that sometimes we have way too many meetings on our calendar. If you're constantly putting yourself on a mute and a video off and, and you're doing other things, you know, consider why are you even on this meeting, right? I mean, if you're a manager, you especially need to make sure you're managing your time and your team's time more efficiently during these times. Yep. Yep. All right. So let's move on to the next slide, Lynn. Next. Yes. Style style. So um, I think cues are changing, right? So like the cues are what people are constantly computing about you and they're, and they're forming an opinion or, or it's setting the tone. And so I think the cues are changing and they're a little bit under a magnifying glass because everybody is in sort of the state of unknown. And so when people are um, wondering or not knowing or trying to figure things out, they look at all the little cues. So they're going to look at how, how do you look, what's your setting, what's your tone like, uh, are, your warmth is going to matter, your ability to make decisions is going to matter, clarity, how do you collaborate, all of those kinds of things um, kind of matter in a different way. Um, I think the, the, the couple of things that in the articles I read, you can see, you can see here, but a couple of themes that sort of came through is you almost want to over, over subscribe, over communicate, be more positive, right? Smile. It's hard to smile in a video. You don't want to smile, right? But you, you should smile because people just think you're disinterested if they see no facial expressions. So I think this is a time where probably you had a lot of trust with your bosses and with your teams and with your business colleagues, but it's almost a time to um, refresh and reinvigorate that trust with open, honest communication, transparency, um, 
you know, we talked a little bit about this, um, and Varsha, you mentioned it, right? Show up to meetings, be engaged, contribute. Don't just sit there and listen, right? Like if you're gonna be at a meeting, be engaged, contribute. Now I know probably a lot of you guys have IMs binging off about BCP, business continuity planning and things that are going on. But as much as you can limit your, your distractions and really engage, I think it's very important because we're almost, you know, building back up that trust and, and that relationship with people. Um, I think it's an excellent idea to talk to people who are gonna be at your meeting in advance of the meeting and say, you know, I'd love you to talk about this or do you mind if I call on you for that? Because you're driving interaction, right? And I, and I think we almost have to drive interaction more now that we're all sort of remote and separate from each other. That if you can sort of create that way that it's, that it's helpful and that it's non-threatening. Right, so if you tell somebody, I'm gonna, I'd like to call on you in this meeting, then they have, a, a, they have the advantage to be able to sort of prepare and be ready, and then it makes it a more positive um, interaction. Um, and then I think you just have to figure out how do I translate my in-person style to other mediums, be it video, be it an audio conference, even be it an IM, right? You, you, and, and I think we've already been really challenged on the audio conference front and on the IM front that we all sort of understand what our brand and what our medium is. But I think what we don't know yet, and, and maybe some of us, it's a little newer, it's certainly newer for me, is how do I be me on a video? <laughs> so I'm, I'm sort of learning that as I go. And then I think the last thing here is be social, right? Um, I think more and more that if, if you're the kind of person that was sort of a poker face and you kept, kept things close to the vest, I'm not sure that style works in this environment. And you have to be a little bit more social, a little bit more forthcoming, um, a little bit more open. Um, so I think that's an important point. Giles, I know you've, you've been sort of working remotely for a, a lot of your life. So what, what do you got? Yeah, this, this is probably the area that I, I'm most passionate about in terms of how to work remotely successfully. Varsha's laughing because she's been, um, she's had communications with me over the years that, that meet this. So when I think of the most important way to describe style for this, I think everybody has to think about make their style be helpful. How can I help everybody else involved do their jobs better? And it's amazing how much that comes back to help you do your job. Okay, what does that mean? One thing that is very, very important, after every meeting, I do this, um, I bombard Varsha with these on meetings, I always send summaries. I go back through, I write down my notes, um, organize them, and I say, here is what my understanding is, mm -hmm. and let people respond. If I'm wrong, that's okay. That's the point. If I'm wrong, I'll even more reason to do it. And it has a couple of benefits, one of which obviously gets everybody hopefully on the same page. Two, to the extent you're needing other people's help and you can't just yell over the, de the table or the desk or something, <laughs> hey, did you get this for me? It reminds people what they need to do to help you. So you're helping them, you're helping yourself. Um, another thing, when I get in long email exchanges with people, the thing that drives me crazy is when there are emails back and forth and something needs to be decided, and there's some piece of information I don't remember, and I've got to dig through five or six emails to figure out what the point is, I never do, I inevitably get it wrong, we all lose. Yeah. So I make a very conscious effort, and I strongly recommend it, is when you get in these back and forths, whenever it's your turn, summarize the key points that you're responding back to. Don't just say, yes, I agree. Or don't just say, um, yeah, I think we should go do X. You say things like, okay, such and such, you know, this person said they needed this. This is the key point. I think we should do X. So that everybody only has to read your email to understand where they are. Again, it'll make your life easier. It will make their life easier. They will appreciate it. The, the last one, and this one is a bit of a, a weird twist, but years of experience on this. When I'm having communications back and forth with people and I'm trying to make decisions they're trying to make decisions, normal business decisions, nothing abnormal, don't ever do it through text. Mm -hmm. It has amazed me how many times I've read something, used to be on the Blackberry, and now on an iPhone, 
and I read it and I make a decision and I respond. And then I go back and I look at it in email and I'm like, oh, I completely misunderstood what they were saying. Yeah. It happens to me all the time. I have no idea if it's just my brain or other people's brains, but it, it's amazing that the context of text versus email changes the meaning of messages. I know that sounds crazy. Take a look at it sometimes. You will find that you have the same reaction. So don't use text for decision making. Use the email, that, that's the, the most basic way to do it. And then obviously visual is better. Um, those are my key, how to help others points. Perfect. And if you're on a video, don't look at your phone while you're talking or people are talking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so we do have a couple of questions. Let me see what's the next slide. Uh, you wanna go through the slide and we go through the questions? Is that Lynn? Okay, or you want to go through the questions? No. Let, let me just knock this off because this slide is, is a little bit of a, a melting pot and a hodgepodge slide of things to consider in terms of balancing your communication, right? And I, and I think some of these things, and I knew this would happen, we've sort of covered it um, already in our conversation, but I think it's important to be yourself um, it's really the best strength that you have, and it's a great way to continue to connect with your team, continue to connect with your business partners and your boss. Um, I think Giles talked about this, right? Be flexible or Varsha, what, what one of you guys was talking about be flexible, right? Like it's, it, it's not perfect. It's not your time is completely aligned with somebody else's timeline. You know, you, you just have to kind of like go with the flow a bit and, and get the best possible outcome that you can at the moment or you know when you can you know being mindful of other people's challenges and, and hurdles that they have um i think you need to check in with people a little bit differently right um you know it seems to me now like i'm asking people questions that i normally would not have asked them before right how is your family how how is you know how's your home situation how how's the lines at your supermarket like there's just personal things that i'm more interested in um with people and it acts as a really nice icebreaker it um it keeps things you know very much like we're in this together right everybody's challenged there's a lot of anxiety out there and so i think sharing your life a little bit more and asking people about their life a little bit more is the new normal um, and being a little bit more transparent than you normally would, right? Because sometimes you, you remember like uh, the old thing was your team is never gonna go home until you go home. So if you're gonna work really, really late, your team's gonna work really, really late. Give them a break and don't do that. And you know, they're, they're taking their lead from you. And I think our teams are still taking their leads from us. And I think we need to be a little bit more transparent, a little bit more sharing and a little bit more like, well, listen, you know, I really have to make lunch for my mother at noon. Can, I, can we push that call to 1230? Right. You know, people are going to go like, sure, if they can accommodate that, they will. So I think don't be afraid to be a little bit transparent in your needs, because then they'll know that they can they can have their own needs as well. Um, and then the last thing that I was reading one of these articles, I can't remember which one it was, but um, I think for leaders and we're, we're going to have more um, seminars, as Giles said, so we'll delve into this point a little bit more. So maybe this is a bit of a teaser, but I think for leaders and managers, you need to continue to have your visit vision. And you need to continue to give your folks uh, tactics, you know, clearly kind of like, what do we need to do to continue to get to our vision um, and, and keep that dialogue going? Because I think sometimes when we're in states of, you know, any kind of business continuity planning, this one is most bizarre, but like even when we had Sandy or even when we had power outages, right, we needed to not get totally fixated on the immediate problem at hand, but continue to remember, we've got a long-term plan and we're moving ahead and we're gonna get there. And, you know, how do we, you know, not become completely stuck? I think people are looking for us to continue to help them figure out how to, how to, how to manage through this. Um, and then the, the last thing, right, is this whole air of calm, right? So sometimes you gotta fake it, right? And, um, you know, there, there's two little short anecdotes that I'll share with you. You know, when I was planning my wedding about a thousand years ago, um, you know, someone told me this wonderful word of wisdom and they said, Lynn, listen, don't sweat it if something goes wrong on your wedding day, because no one knows what's supposed to happen but you. Nobody has, you know, all those, uh, you know, things that are going to be perfect like clockwork, but you. So 
don't even pay any attention to it because nobody nobody knows. And then the other one that's a good one comes from my mother-in-law who's Irish. And uh, she says, you have to be like a duck, right? So duck above the water, serene, uh, below the water, paddling like crazy. <laughs> so, it, you know, think about those as you're, you're sort of conducting your everyday. Oh, that's, that's super awesome. Thank you. Giles, you want to comment on this? Sure, just two, two things. One, when you're having meetings, it's a good tactic to reach out during the meeting to each person involved and ask their opinion and keep them engaged. It's even easier to hide on a video conference than it is in a regular meeting. Yeah. Um, but people like to contribute. So reach out, ask them their opinion, make a point. I've seen people keep lists of everybody in the meeting and make a point that you talk to everybody to bring them into it. Um, they'll be happy too because they'll be more comfortable speaking. And the second one is and it's a 100% rule. Never, 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 never reply negatively or emotionally mm -hmm. in email or text. It doesn't matter what it is. Don't be sarcastic. Don't be negative. Don't be angry. It just, it never works. You always regret it. I have regretted it every time I have ever put anything negative in an email. It, it, I want to do it. And so what I also do is that the 24 hour rule. If I ever have an emotional response to something, I force myself to not react for 24 hours. It's amazing how often after 24 hours, I really don't care. So if you have a negative reaction, call the person up. Empathy works great. You'll get through it fine. You put it in email, you will regret it. So just, I've, I've years of having to deal with this. So anyway, that's it. And empathy right now is very important because everybody's locked in. Nobody can go out for a cup of coffee and sort things out, right? We are all virtual at home, maybe frustrated. You know, a lot of these things are going on. So we have a huge another session, which is next Tuesday, that talks about how do we manage up, manage down, sideways, right? If you're a manager, how are you managing your team remotely? If you're uh, the, your team and you want to communicate with your manager, make sure that they know what you're doing. How do you do that? So if you guys are interested in that, definitely make sure you sign up for the next week's sem seminar. But for now, I think we're just about out of time, five more minutes. So let's go through some question and, uh, questions that have been asked. So the first question is, what is the best experience you had working remotely last couple of weeks? Any of you guys? I, uh, I'll, I'll tell you mine. mine. Mine is very simple. I've never had a video conference with more than one person. And so actually at the very beginning of all this, I was just so pleased with my success at having a video conference with just, you know, myself and one other person. And I thought that was terrific. And then I was like, wow, we're actually having video conferences with multiple people. So I first learned it from Varsha. And then of course, friends of mine wanted to have, you know, virtual cocktail parties and somebody had a birthday while, you know, we were, we were in isolation and uh, they said, let's have Zoom. And, um, and I said, okay, are you going to send out the invite? And she said, well, I'm cooking pot roast right now for my family later, but I'll figure it out in a little bit. And I said, oh, hang on, I'll figure it out. So I went, I figured out how to set up a Zoom and, and I did it with my friends, right? Low, low risk environment. It wasn't a, a business setting. Um, so I, I think the, the whole idea that we can have multiple video interactions and really, really, I think come very close to recreating um, that conference room setting like we're across the table from each other I think has been eye-opening for me and and it maybe links back to Sharon's question on what's the new normal right uh, I think this is going to become a lot more acceptable as a way of interacting um, than we really know just as yet I, I just say the um, lack of tension in these video conferences I've had days <laughs> of them and the fact that they're all no tension. Everybody knows where we are trying to deal with. Everybody's contributing has been wonderful. A lot more peaceful than a lot of meetings I've been in where people are being contentious. It's just been a wonderful experience. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I, I know Giles, you have uh, managed to like Lynn remotely for our, when you were at PIMCO and you were here at New York and the rest of the team Newport Beach and we, we function very beautifully through not just Newport Beach, you had global teams too. So it's, yeah. These, these skills are all useful, have always been useful regardless. It's just now they're, they're more attenuated, but yes. 
Okay, and the next question is, what are the approaches and suggestions you have hiring remotely? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I know you're gonna jump on this. <laughs> well, um, so here, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be very transparent. I am looking for a job right now in the midst of all of this. And um, I've been on a lot of Skype and WebEx interviews, which have been very, very interesting. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I had uh, one conversation with a firm who actually came back to me and said, you know what, Len, like you a lot, but, you know, we really can't afford to take the risk of hiring externally right now. We need an internal person because of our business continuity and getting ready to go. But then there was another firm that I was talking to and they're like, oh, yeah, we brought in three new people yesterday. And yeah, onboarding was um, really tough to figure out but we figured it out, you know? And when you think about how we've all adapted to moving from our work life to our home life and connecting remotely and all of that, I think, um, I think after we get past this next sort of wave of, you know, figuring out how we're gonna flatten the curve and, and really, you know, what's happening, that then firms will start thinking again about what do I need to do to get things done? Because you know what, quite honestly, usually we start the year off with a bang and first quarter's out like a shot and then you know, we get things done in second quarter and then third and fourth quarter, we kind of like just bring it home. And I, we haven't done that right now. And so I think the year's gonna flip on itself a little bit and there'll be sort of more focus on how do we get done what we need to get done for the year in the latter half of the year. And I think after we come through this a little bit more, um, people will think about what do I need to get this done? And then I'm hoping that um, you know we're right and the new normal uh, people embrace and they do onboard people remotely because it might be the way we're gonna to have to go for the next short while. So um, I think some firms are gonna do and some firms aren't, right? I, I think that's really just the bottom line. And, and some firms are gonna be you know, desperate, they need somebody in so they make it work. And other firms are gonna say, well, listen, this is gonna be our new normal, let's figure out how to do it. Absolutely. Okay, so I have one more question, Lynn and Giles. What do we need to know about body language and your tone? especially when you're virtual. I mean, I, this is actually even my question. I feel like sometimes people speak much louder and then it comes out on remote, like they're angry or they're up, upset about something, right? Is that is there an advice that you can give? I think yeah. I'm, Go ahead. A, a bit of it on the body language side, let, let's start on that. Nothing is worse than having a virtual meeting and seeing the person do this. <laughs> Right? <laughs> looking at their phone or seeing the person not paying any attention. So most importantly, pay attention, even if you have to fake it. Okay, you know, that's another story, but pay attention. It, it keeps everybody engaged and it's not as off-putting because you have these pictures right in your face. And if you see someone bored, falling asleep or something, it really affects you. So that would be my, my suggestion number one is do try to pay attention. Um, during these, don't get distracted. It'll help everybody. Yep. And the last question, I don't know if we can answer this, but can you really ask for upgrades on your internet or whatever other infrastructure you have because you're working from home? Well, let, me, let me just say one thing on that, sort of the shortcut answer to that before we get to it, because I just did it here. We all use Wi-Fi at home. It's become the new normal. Um, what I did for this meeting was actually went back and plugged my computer directly into the modem. Yeah. Um, it makes a difference. So just something to think about. A lot of the, the static is coming in our houses because we all use Wi-Fi, which is good for most. But if it's something important, um, try a direct connection. That will help. Yeah, uh, yeah there's, a, there's an article I had on one of the pages from PC World that actually has some of those technical tips in it. Oops, sorry. What? No, it's okay. People will see it when they see the presentation. Yeah. Um, they're a little hard to, to read in the, the light print, but um, one of the ones, PC World, look it up. But yeah, that was their suggestion, Giles, is, is get, make more of a direct connection. Mm. Okay, 
So I think that's really all the questions we had. Uh, if nobody has any other questions, I wanted to really thank our wonderful speakers, Lynn and Giles. This was a great advice. Happy to send presentations to people who have attended or people who have missed. As I said, we have done the recording of this webinar and we will make that webinar available. And for people who don't know much about Wings for Growth, they're new to Wings. Uh, we're very happy to have you on these webinars and we want you to know that Wings is a mentoring and coaching program, a very high touch formal mentoring program that runs for 10 months. Uh, for women to learn leadership skills uh, and accelerate their personal growth and professional growth. So if we will be kicking off uh, our next cohort uh, soon, possibly in June or July. Enrollments are open, so sign up if you are interested in learning more about WINGS and want to enroll as a mentee. We will have many more uh, amazing mentors and speakers like Lynn and Giles and others. So. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the other side of this. And with that, have a wonderful night. Stay safe, healthy, and we will see you next Tuesday at 5. In Great. Thanks, Marcia. Thanks, Marcia. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Giles. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Stay Thank safe. You.